Okay, so you know I've had a lot of questions about the Gradia gum and uh, how it's used and uh, which products to use and so forth and I thought I'd do a little review today uh, to give you some insight into uh, the products and some of the ancillary things that I would recommend to anybody that's going to get into this type of uh, characterization. And this characterization, of course, is again veneering of composite material over PMMA, that's denture based acrylic. Um, so let's go through a few of the things that you'll need in order to start uh, what I'll call my recommendation for a primer. In other words, your very basic colorization. And of course, the first thing we'll need is we'll need a denture, one that you've processed. Um, I suggest that you put your character in that denture um, in wax and then process it to contour. Um, and then once that's processed, I finish the case down uh, to the point where it has uh, uh, all the border rolls are correct. Uh, everything is trimmed to length correctly, everything is smoothed out, and then once I have it all smoothed and pumiced the way I like it, then the next step would be to air abrade the, uh, the entire area that will be receiving the composite, the Gradia gum composite material. Uh, the, um, the type of uh, material I use for air abrasion is the uh, Renfert, uh, I think it's... Uh, 50 micron, hang on one second, I can check, right here, that's the, yes, 50 micron Cobra, so that's Cobra 50 micron uh, aluminous oxide, and I'll treat that surface uh, just to give it a nice matte finish, which is the accepting layer for uh, the next step which would be the composite primer because in order to get the composite material to stick on PMMA you have to have some sort of a bonding layer and that bonding layer is provided by the composite primer. Uh, I mark a lot of my bottles with the uh, curing times uh, I use just like a little uh, label maker and I'll put the actual time that it needs to be cured and in this case for the composite primer it's one minute so I would put a coating of this material on my denture base and then cure it under a lab of light for about one minute so one of the constituents after we have the denture uh, prepared would be you have to have composite primer and we'll, now we'll go through the materials. You need to have a composite primer. And then in the Gradia kits, you'll see a card which will identify the products that come in the Gradia gum shade line. My technique for colorization of denture bases has nothing to do with the bodies. In other words, G20 through G24, I, I don't build up with a body. What I do is I use the gum modifiers, the GM numbers, and we have 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. And then of course there's a translucent paste which I call a carrier. Um, for, my, uh, for, for my recommendation, my recommendation for those who just want to jump in and give it a roll without getting too confused, let me recommend uh, just a couple of these colors which will work to your benefit. Um, namely, the GM35. The GM35 is your blanch effect that you get in your denture base along the necks. It's a light, it's a light color. Um, it's intense. Uh, you have to be careful the way you use it because you don't want to have a bunch of white necks. But GM35 is one that I would recommend. So that's 35. Then I recommend uh, GM33. GM33 is your, uh, it's, it's, it's a purplish or it's a yeah, purple would be the best way to put it, although purple is kind of, you know, it's tough to, to um, 
you know, there are different grades of purple. This is more of a, like I would call a vascular style purple. I don't know if you can see that, that range, but that's, that's the, the, it's almost, oh, I don't know, it's like a, I guess that would be like a plum, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So GM33, and where GM33 goes is, uh, in areas where you want to uh, show depth, depth of tissue that is, okay? So you have 35 is for the blanche. You have 33, which gives you depth of tissue. Um, then you have 36, GM36, which is your vascular red. And you can make that more or less intense by adding or subtracting uh, the GT41, which will lighten up every color you have. You have to mix it in ratios, and if you come to my hands-on course at the GC America's Learning Center in August, uh, I'll be demonstrating how I use those different variations and how I use the G gum translucent in order to obtain the effects that I'm looking for. Anyways, GM35, 33, 36, and GT41. Okay, so really we're talking about four syringes here just four syringes of product um, and then of course you're gonna have to use some sort of a little plastic well now these little wells I think that they were recommended for putting the the colorants in the the gum modifiers in but I found that it works better if I use it to um, clean my brushes <laughs> to be honest with you I I don't really, uh, I don't really dig putting my colors in there because they're really tough to clean. I know they're disposable, but I just think it's a mess. But after I've used the products uh, on a certain brush and I don't want to um, influence the colors, what I'll do is I'll just wet the, my brush in the well and then I'll take a paper towel and uh, wipe it clean. Uh, this, is a this is a great little thing. And by the way, that's isopropyl alcohol is what we use to clean the composite materials off of the brushes. So, okay, I've got the well. When I'm, uh, when I'm using the products, uh, I have to have something to, um, to be able to see what color I have. Um, like I said earlier, just a second ago, I've, this comes in the kit. But what I found that works even better is a white piece of phenolic or marble, any type of a, a white background, so that when I lay the colors on this area, I can judge intensity and so forth based on uh, the background. And uh, see, like if I if I smear it like that, I can. I can see and understand immediately the intensity that each color that I'm going to apply brings to the acrylic. And uh, so, and it's easy to clean after I get through and so forth. As you're using these products, by the way, always remember that when you take some product and put it out for yourself and then you use it, you want to make sure that in between using it, you cover your material with this little cover that comes along with the kit as well and that just keeps it from pre-curing too much on you. Now if you find that this material begins to pre-cure too much you can also add a drop of the composite primer to loosen it up a little bit. Uh, don't overuse that composite primer. A very small drop uh, with this material Oops, sorry. Let's see if I can't get it off this time. Uh, it won't come off co correctly. Let me see if it's this one here. I think that one was tight. Yes. So what I'll do is we'll put down just a little drop like that. And you might even want to keep a drop of that primer over to the side. But by using that primer, you can see that it loosens it loosens up a pre-cured material a little bit. That pre-curing, again, just comes from your light source that you're using to work under. But again, just a little helpful tip, uh, tip there. And you can see that it loosens the intensity as well. All right. So composite primer, four tubes of 
four tubes of material, a cover so that you can cover the material so it doesn't pre-cure, some sort of a well, uh, in this case the well that's provided to clean my brush and you can see how it cleans, the isopropyl alcohol cleans the brush. Okay, and then you're going to need instruments for application. You're going to need brushes, you're going to need uh, uh, instruments like this, just little plastic tipped instruments, anything to pick the material up and place it where you need it to be and then some sort of a blending tool in order to make sure that you get it all blended out correctly. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, you also need an air barrier. An air barrier is a product that you use on top of your coloring agents uh, before you final cure. In other words, you can cure this, your applications in you know, like 30, uh, I should say 15 to 20 second stages to stiffen it so it doesn't run. But in order to final cure, you'll have to, once your colors are in place, you'll use the air barrier and you'll cover your entire denture with that air barrier. Uh, wherever you've added the composite and then you'll run a three minute cycle in the lab light in order to set the material and cure it final. You might even run two, two segments of three minutes or six minutes total if you find there's a tackiness on the surface but you gotta coat it with an air barrier in order for the product to cure underneath. You cannot leave it uncoated with air barrier for your final cure and expect it to cure the correct way because it leaves an inhibition layer. The air barrier actually um, sets up so that you can wash off the inhibition layer which will be sticking to the the air barrier material. Alright, so you got that going, you got the cover, you got the well. A couple other little things worth mentioning is that on any of your brushes where you're using OptiGlaze and you're using composite primer and using different types of material, it would behoove you to mark your brushes according to the products that you're using and not to cross contaminate your brushes because if you mix OptiGlaze with composite primer or OptiGlaze with uh, your GMs, your gum modifiers or if you get air barrier mixed into it, uh, not good. So what you should do is you should always mark your brushes with, uh, and I, again I use like a little brother label maker which identifies the brush and it's used solely for that single purpose and never never for anything else. This will keep you from having curing problems, uh, streaking in your material and so forth. So again, make sure that you identify what brushes you use for what materials and only use them for those specific materials. And when you first start working with these materials, don't grab brushes you've been using for other things to start. Get yourself some brand new brushes, mark them and then just use them strictly for those purposes. Um, so anyways, this gets you going. These are the products. Uh, basic couple little tips here, not, not real big tips, but just some things to keep in mind to keep, prevent yourself from having uh, issues from the get-go. And then, you know, uh, the three colors and the translucent to give you an idea of what you'll need to purchase. Um, you know, if you want to buy the whole kit, that's great. A lot of people like to get in a little bit light and then increase as you go. That's the way I roll. Uh, I would prefer to get the ones that I'll need first, learn those really well, and then introduce other um, colors into the equation. Uh, as you can see on the card here, there are several that I did not mention. Uh, the 34, the 32, the 31. There's, there's several different um, uh, shades of red and pink which can be added but depending on your depending on your canvas and your canvas of course is the base material that you're using will really then define which products you'll be using to get the, the effects that you're looking for. Um, anyway that'll get you going this is the Gradia gum colorant system for dentures for acrylics um, these are the products that I'm recommending and a few of the tips and I hope this helps you out and I'll be working now next on the technique of the actual application and again all of this will be covered in a lecture hands-on demonstration and over-the-shoulder demonstration that I'll be presenting in August, August 14th I believe it is, it's a, it's a Friday at the GC Learning Center 
It'll have seven hours of CE in that course, and uh, it's $150 if you pay before August 11th, I believe it is. Uh, I hope that you uh, uh, take a, a look at what is being offered in the course, and I hope to see you there, and uh, make sure you introduce yourself uh, and uh, tell me that you saw this on my YouTube channel. It does me good to know that people are watching these videos.